Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2015 film Some Kind of Hate. And when I'm putting up this review, it's available for streaming on the Shutter streaming service. Now, this is a film that's also written and directed by the same people who wrote and directed Daniel Isn't Real, which is another movie that just went on to Shutter. And Daniel Isn't Real was a 2019 release, I believe. So there's some similarities. If you really like Daniel Isn't Real, then you might really want to check out Some Kind of Hate. If you really like Some Kind of Hate, then you might really want to check out Daniel Isn't Real because you, it, they feel similar in a few ways. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, as I kind of go through my review. There will be spoilers, like I said, because this is an older film from 2015. So if you don't want spoilers, stop right here, go watch the film, then come back. But I would say up front, I feel conflicted on whether I would recommend this to people or not, because for, for me personally, I didn't, I didn't hate the film, but I didn't super like it. It's a mix, and you'll see what I mean. So if you feel conflicted as well, just go watch it. There's enough in there that uh, you'll be like, okay, I don't hate the fact that I watched it. That's fine. And then you can come back and see what I had to say. So this is directed by Adam Egypt Mortimer. Like I said, he did Daniel Isn't Real. He also did the short for New Year's Eve in the Holidays Horror Anthology film. Uh, written by Mortimer as well with Brian Delu, who did scripts for Curvature, Paradise Hills, and... Daniel isn't real as well. Uh, he's, he was also an author, so just so people know that. It does seem that the writing style of these two is more literary and less theatrical. They're very upfront and blunt about things. Uh, that's one of the things that really occurred to me, and it it is also in Daniel isn't real as well, which I have a review for on this channel, so you can check that out. That one is no spoilers, though, since it's a newer film. So really the way they write is more from this perspective of an, how an author writes a book. They tell you a lot of things because you, there are no visuals. So they have to tell you more instead of just showing you things and being more subtle. It's more blunt. It's more upfront. It, it describes too much in a sense. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's less, less uh, subliminal. It's less coy about everything. It's very in your face. And I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on beat you over the head with things so it's like that in some kind of hate it's like that in daniel's and real <coughs> excuse me that's just how they make their, their films so if you like that or you're fine with it all good i personally am not big into that i like films to be a little bit more um thematically uh hidden somewhat you have to dig a little bit i like it to be a little more subtext as opposed to you know, a lot of things in your face. But that said, there are some interesting things in this film. And I think the concept, the initial concept of this script is a really interesting one. And there are some really cool things that are executed in it. But I think that how it was executed are where I have some of the issues. So we'll talk about that. Uh, the beginning signals some desperation and brutality as the girl tries to climb up the stairs. Now, later on, obviously, we learn that that's Moira and she's basically... Um, creating a ruse to, to, you know, lure someone down to, to kill them. But, uh, it, it sets up a really weird mystery in the beginning and you're like, Ooh, what's going on here? But it, it seems very raw, very bl brutal, very, um, desperate, like I said. And, uh, I like that that's how they kind of started off. It obviously takes a little bit of a step back after that. But we get back to it at some point, and then you kind of are thinking back, and you're like, ah, yes, this is what was happening in the beginning. And I kind of like that when they have that kind of callback. So I like that aspect of it. Uh, you see how the main character, Lincoln, is already worn down by the bullying at his house. So when he actually goes up to high school, that's why he has such a short fuse, and he ends up you know, getting push, push, push until a point where he stabs that dude in the face with a fork, which is what ends him up at that... Um, camp I guess it's like a reform camp for kids who are like bad kids you know so um you you get a good feeling there of why he snapped the way he did because you see all the frustration that's been built up at home and then that just carries all the way into school and it, you know at school he's hoping you know maybe this is a reprieve I got away from my abusive father maybe now I can kind of breathe a little bit for the day before I have to go back to that but no, that sort of frustration, that abusive uh, relationship continues with other people at high school, and it's just push, 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 until he can't take it anymore, and he just snaps. And that's one of the things, one of the main themes in this film is how much can a person take of bullying, of being abused, 
in one way or another, whether it's emotional, verbal, physical, whatever, uh, how much can a person take before they actually do snap? Because they're forced. Because everyone pretty much has some sort of breaking point. Now, whether that breaking point ends up being what Lincoln has, which is a physical breaking point where he will get physical and he will lash out, or if it's emotional and per person just has like a freak out, a breakdown, you know, it, it varies per for every person. But that's one of the main themes in this film is, you know, at what point do people start fighting back or at what point do people just break down or, you know, the constant abuse. Uh-oh, giving your cell phone away is never a good sign in a horror film nowadays, I wrote down. Uh, when he first gets that kind of like reform camp or whatever it is, he's... They're like, everyone give us your phones. Now, when they were doing that, I was just like, usually when they're covering that base in a horror film, it means that things are obviously going to go bad and they're going to wish they had that phone at some point. But it didn't really come into play that way because obviously later on, Lincoln just kind of sneaks out at night and he gets his phone back. And I'm just like, oh, okay, well, I guess it didn't really matter that they needed to collect the phones because they're not even keeping tabs on these kids really and that's one of my problems with this it doesn't feel realistic because this is supposed to be a camp where they're really working with these pe these kids they're trying to help them out they take their phones but then they don't actually watch them like how is it that lincoln was able to just easily it didn't even seem like he snuck out it's just like he walked out goes into this other building gets his phone and then goes and hangs out with oh what was her name real quick Caitlin, yes, goes and hangs out with Caitlin, and it's like there are none of these, I guess they're kind of guidance counselors, or none of these uh, camp counselors, I'm sorry, none of these, like, camp counselors are there. Like, where are they? These kids aren't being watched. They're supposedly really bad kids who do really bad things. You should be watching them. <laughs> so it doesn't feel realistic for that reason. And then and that's one of my big problems with this film, and also with Daniel Isn't Real, is characters in general don't feel realistic. And they don't act in a realistic manner a lot of the times. It's just they act according to what the story wants them to do, not what would seem real. And they're also one-dimensional. That's what that's the biggest issue in this is almost all the characters are just one-dimensional. So it's kind of like they're all one emotion. They're all one way. They're all one thing. Like none of them are complex human beings. And that's the way it is in this film. That's the way it is in Daniel Isn't Real. And that always bothers me. When you're writing a script, you need to have the people seem real. You need to have the people feel conflicted or at least show a range of emotions. It just seems like everyone's so flat. They're so one-dimensional. And that's my biggest problem with the film. One of my problems, but the biggest problem. Um, so what is the motivation of these guys at the camp trying to get Lincoln to be violent? I mean, I, I, I feel like, and maybe someone can answer it down here, what your opinion is on it. I feel like it's a motivation of, well, we just like to get reactions from people. We just like to pick pe pick at people, see if we can push a person's buttons enough so that they'll try and lash out. It seems to start for no reason. Um, and, you know, maybe that's kind of the point of it, that, you know, bullies just seem to do this stuff for no reason because they have problems and they're always seeking that reaction from people and that is i do know that that is kind of one of the one of the points in this is that um people who act that way people who are bullies are looking for reactions they, they push and push and push people to see what they can make them do to see what they can make them say or physically do or fight back or whatever and that's kind of what's on display in this and that's the reason that moira is the push back like she becomes the push back at a point where Lincoln can't take it anymore because he's been pushed, pushed, pushed and abused so much. And he's fighting so hard to not lash out again like he did when he stabbed that kid in the face with a fork. So he's trying so hard. He gets his breaking point and he's kind of asking for help in a sense because he doesn't want to do that again. He doesn't want to be violent again, even though he does punch Willie in the face because he reached that point again. But he doesn't want to because he's trying to work on himself to be better. So he's the closest to not a one-dimensional character, but I did find it interesting that that was kind of like his breaking point when he asked for help, and then Moira pops up and is just like, oh, I'll help you, and that's, she deflects it all. Basically, she's kind of like a battery. The abuse comes and comes and comes and comes, and then it's stored up basically through Lincoln, like he's the conduit, and then it's stored up in Moira, and she kind of 
you know, throws it back at the person who is the abuser. And that's, you know, obviously done by cutting herself, then that cuts them. So it's a reflection of all the abuse and all the pain that's done. And she does it to herself, and that goes back onto them. And that's that's basically all the abuse that they've given off, they're getting it back, like tenfold, basically. So it's their re it's revenge, in a sense. No, I mean, it is. It is revenge, not in a sense. I would think if these are bad kids, they would have a closer watch. Yeah, I already kind of talked like that. It just seems like Lincoln just, whatever, get out of here. And they're alone a lot with each other. That's the other thing. It seems like there's a ton of downtime and they're not really doing a whole lot with the actual counselors. They're just like, okay, we'll talk to you for, you know, a few minutes a day and then just go and wander around. <laughs> so it just doesn't feel fleshed out. I know exactly what Lincoln's saying about the heavy metal music taking his anger away. When he was explaining to Caitlin that, you know, that really angry music actually calms him down and, like, takes him kind of away from reaching that edge of lashing out, I experience that. Like, when I get really upset about things, if I listen to heavy metal music, it kind of takes that away from me. And it's, and it's weird because it's like the screaming, the anger, the lyrics involved are venting for me. It's getting the frustration out just by me listening to it. And uh, one of my main bands to go to for that is Slipknot, spe specifically their first album. Which, by the way, I, I had bought their first album when it first came out. And I remember the first time I listened through it, it made me feel angry and like I wanted to be violent. And then every time after that, it did the opposite, which is what it does now, where it's therapeutic. It just like makes me feel calm and releases any sort of tension or anger that I have. So I know what Lincoln was talking about in this the body language of the police officer when he first shows up is unbelievably goofy and over the top. He's a very throwaway character. I, I can sense that they were trying to make him a little bit comedic, but it does not at all fit the tone of the film because there's nothing else that's really comedic or anything. And he's a really pointless character too. Like, super pointless. I don't understand why he was there. Dumb. And this is one of the problems, is when you don't have rich characters like this, a lot of them feel throwaway, a lot of them feel pointless, and you're just kind of like, okay, why are they there? I don't care. So when he got killed, it's like, okay. The level of carefree attitude around Will's death makes the movie not seem believable. This is another one of the issues I was talking about with the characters not being written to a point where they're believable. And like I said, they don't do things that are believable. When Willie dies, everyone's just like... Oh, man, that dude died. Okay. Like, no one really cares that much. No one seems to really be broken up about it. People talk about it, but they talk about it from a standpoint of amusement. And it's not realistic. It doesn't make sense. It's odd. It's dumb as well because people would not react that way. There would be actual, like, people mad about it, people sad about it, and you don't really see that much. Other than his one friend. Willie's one friend reacts that way. No one else does, really. It's, It just doesn't seem right. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, the writing, just it's just not there. There's a good concept. The writing isn't there. Running up to the hay storage area of a barn isn't going to help anything when someone's after you. Especially when it's a horror film. If anyone's seen enough horror films, when the friend of Willie is about to get his from Moira. Which is a good scene. Um, he runs up to like the second floor where all the hay is in the barn. I'm just like, yeah, again, something, someone, something a person would not do because it's much quicker and easier to just run out of the barn. That's what he would do. He wouldn't go up to where the hay is because you can't get anywhere. I understand it's like a split second decision or something, but a person would be way more likely to just run out of the barn and maybe try and get help. Instead of go try to hide, because how do you think you're going to hide from someone who's already in the barn who saw you go up there? Another one of these moments of it just doesn't make sense. And it's eye roll inducing. I'm just like, it, it, it doesn't make sense to a point where I'm over it. I'm just like, here's a, one, yet another thing that makes absolutely no sense that's being done. Don't like it. Uh, the gore in this is actually good. I really like it. I love the concept of how Moira basically uses herself in a sense like a voodoo doll. Like I was talking about like taking in all the abuse, taking in all the bullying, and then just like throwing it back on that person tenfold and, you know, physically harming them with it and 
killing a lot of them. Um, it's, it's a really cool concept. And this is what I'm talking about. This is a great concept, a great idea. Just the execution is very sloppy and it's, it's just not there. They needed to take a lot more, um, passes at the script, maybe have, bring some other people in to take a look at the script and make some edits because between the two of these guys, um, like I said, the characters, they just aren't there. Just a lot is not there with it. Great concept though. And the directing is good. Overall, I, I enjoy the directing. I think that cinematography, for the most part, is pretty well done, except camera work, pretty shaky at times, and that is another thing that really, really bothers me, like excessively shaky. So, um, But for the most part, cinematography looking good, directing looking good. So they just need someone else to handle the script, or at least revisions to it. You can see that Moira represents the violent urge for revenge that tempts anyone who is consistently pushed. But if you embrace that, you're also harming yourself like Moira does in order to exact revenge. Yes. So I do feel like that's kind of a point that's being made of it's not just the how how much can a person take until they strike back. It's a point of Lincoln is trying so hard to not retaliate. So Moira retaliates for him. But you can see that there's a toll on herself. She goes through a lot of physical pain. She is hurting herself in order to hurt people back. So getting that revenge is actually not healthy. It's actually more harmful than anything. And I think that's a, an interesting, cool point that comes out of this. The scene with Lincoln telling Moira he doesn't need her anymore is unbelievably corny. Especially because the, the two uh, actors in it, their performances are bad. Uh, between the two of them, it was a terrible scene. And then, not only that, but then they do that exact same scene again between Caitlin and Moira of Caitlin saying, I don't need you anymore. And it plays out exactly the same. It's terrible, it's corny, and the acting in it wasn't good. The acting overall in this, I thought was okay. But those particular scenes, the ones of I don't need you anymore with both Caitlin and Lincoln were not good, and they weren't well-written either. And how did we get to Moira and Caitlin being together? It's like some scenes were cut out. Yeah, that kind of jump that they make, where it's, uh, you know, Lincoln and Moira are a thing and everything, and then it's all of a sudden you see Moira, Moira and Caitlin, and, you know, Moira's cutting herself for Caitlin, and then it's showing up on Caitlin, which is kind of a cool scene visually, but how did we get there? There, there's really no explanation. It seems like there was just this illogical jump and there were portions of the film actually just cut that we needed. Like, how did we get here? We need to know how we got here. This is one of the, that I'm talking about with the writing. The rock in the mouth scene is very effective. It's cringe inducing. Uh, it's very good. And I love how they just cut to the, uh, the horse chomping on that apple because the, the auditory cue on that is so close to the rock in the mouth when it looked like she was actually going to chomp down that like that crunch with the, of the apple kind of gets you like ugh, a little bit. It makes you cringe a little bit, and that's good. That's, that's a great scene. That was really well done. I assume Lincoln can kill Moira because she's actually bullied. Those, because he's actually bullied. Uh, those who do the bullying have violence turned back on themselves, but I'm assuming that she's impervious. Moira's impervious to that, but the only people who can kill her are people who are actually bullied and not bullies themselves. That's my guess. I don't know if someone could put some comments down there and give me, do you think that's right? Like, give me your guess on that one. Why it is that it seems like no one is able to kill Moira, but Lincoln can kill Moira. Unless it just has to do with, it just has to be fire. I don't know. But he does it by doing it to himself. So I assume... They're playing off the fact that there's a special bond or link between the two of them. But I was assuming that that was basically broken when they had the scene with Moira and Caitlin because it seems like they were coming together at that point. But then she broke it off. So then wasn't she kind of basically tethered to like nobody? I don't know. It's a little convoluted and I feel like that should have been flushed out better. Uh, like I said, cinematography looks pretty good, but the camera work at times is overly shaky. The music is a little bit over the top. Uh, I'm more of a less is more type person like I was talking about earlier. So how in your face and hit you over the head the music ends up being a bunch of the times 
is not my thing, but I, I do get it. I do kind of understand because the tie in with Lincoln talking about how music makes him feel and helps him cope. Uh, and then you're playing that music in these times where he's not exacting violence. It's like the music is exacting violence in a sense for him. So I understand the use of it. So it makes sense. It's just my personal taste. I'm not a, not a big fan of it being so in your face. Much like Daniel isn't real, it feels like portions of the story are missing. In addition to the characters being one-dimensional, it just feels like we're missing parts of the story. We're missing backstory. We're missing information about who these people are, what their motivations are. We're missing some information on what has happened between here and here in the film. Um, and that's one of my problems with it. It's just not enjoyable to follow for that reason. It seems that a big part of the film is seeing the frustrations of Lincoln build to critical mass. You end up feeling the frustration for him because of how much bullying you witness as he just takes it. And that's one of the very effective things about this film is that with all that you see with Lincoln just being pushed and pushed and pushed, like you as an audience member feel frustrated. Like you feel the frustration building in you. You kind of feel the anger building in you for Lincoln to a point. So they did a good job with that, portraying that and putting that on the screen and conveying that to, to the audience. So I like that aspect of it. Um, this is particularly frustrating because we're used to having revenge from horror films and people like Lincoln not taking that much abuse. That is another point to make. Like It does start to feel so frustrating from the audience member because as horror fans, we're used to getting revenge out of horror films and not letting it get to the point that Lincoln does and then still doesn't do anything about it. And it's just kind of like, oh, I'm confused by this. What the, what the heck? And I felt that way. Uh, this speaks a lot to the motivations of people who bully. They get satisfaction out of the reactions they get from being mean to others. I feel like that was kind of another point. And on that point, I will share with, with everyone out there watching this what my strategy is when dealing with people who are a bully type, whether that's in my real life or like internet troll type people, stuff like that. Usually the best way to go about it is you don't react. Uh, usually, especially if it's a verbal thing through the internet or in person, just being verbal, uh, they're usually looking to push buttons. They're looking to get some sort of reaction. If you just don't react at all, eventually they're just going to stop because they're not getting the reaction that they want. And they're doing it for a specific reaction to satisfy some sort of sick need that they have. So that's my advice. Uh, physical situation, that's a little bit different. I haven't been in many of those situations, so couldn't really tell you too much about that. But my thoughts on this film rating-wise, uh, like I said, like there's some really good things I liked in this, especially the concept. There's some really good ideas. There's some things they did execute really well. But then there's some stuff that's kind of a mess about this film. So I'm really uh, kind of like this. Um, so with five stars possible, half stars in play, I'm going to give it a two-star rating. I was between a two and a two and a half. But I think I'm not fully in the middle on it. I'm a little bit more to the no side than the yes side. So anyway, I would love to hear people's opinions on this. Put a comment down there. Um, when I'm posting this video, it's a day after I did a live stream about this film. So if people want to find out what other people had to say during my live stream through the chat, because I read that on uh, onto the video, um, yeah, you can check that out. So. I recorded this review before the live stream and then I'm posting it after the live stream because I didn't want anything that I talk about with people in the live stream to change my opinion on the film uh, after my first viewing of it. So anyway, uh, thanks everyone for checking this out. Put some comments down there. Let me know your feelings on this film. Do me a quick favor. Hit the subscribe because if you like any videos I do, this or any other one, that's your best way to repay me. Literally takes you a second. It is so painless and it means a lot to me. So thank you very much for that. If you're already subscribed, hit the thumbs up. And until next time, keep it brutal.